Hi everyone, my name is Maisie and I am the Senior Education Coordinator at the Central Caribbean Marine Institute. Now today we are going to be looking at our coral bleaching experiment. What we're going to do first of all is I'm actually going to go through how you mix this paint. So I have a couple of containers right here. I have one that is full of the thermochromatic pigment. I have one called pink colour right here and the other one is full of the latex paint. Now what we are going to do is we are quite simply going to mix the pigment and the latex paint together. Now I'm just going to brush some of the pigment in. According to the instructions you should start with around one part pigment to 20 parts paint but you can add as much as you want so you can get the colour that you really like for use with this demonstration. So I'm just going to brush in some of the paint here and then I'm simply going to start mixing it around inside of here. So do be careful not to mix it too hard otherwise you are going to get that pigment everywhere but you can see that this paint is starting to slowly absorb some of the pigments that I am mixing in. Okay, so I have been mixing this for about two minutes now and I've put in all of the thermochromatic pigment into this latex paint and you can see that it's this really nice pink colour now. So nice and bright, so when I paint that on it's going to be nice and obvious on top of the object that we're going to paint it on. Now, before I continue, I am just going to go into a little bit of background about coral bleaching and what it actually is. And what I'm going to speak about first of all is the symbiotic relationship that we find between an algae called zooxanthellae and corals. So this algae and corals have a mutualistic symbiotic relationship, meaning they both benefit from one another. We have the algae, the zooxanthellae, that lives inside the tissues of the coral, providing it with some really important things. So just like the majority of algae, the zooxanthellae undergoes photosynthesis and it converts carbon dioxide with the use of sunlight into carbohydrates. Now this carbohydrate is a great source of food. But the zooxanthellae actually produces too much for itself and instead it gives the rest of these carbohydrates to the corals and it actually is the coral's main source of food. So the coral is gaining carbohydrates, which is a food source, from the zooxanthellae. But what is the zooxanthellae gaining? The zooxanthellae is gaining carbon dioxide that it needs to undertake photosynthesis and it's also gaining some really important nutrients as well such as phosphates and nitrates. So they are both benefiting from one another so this is a mutualistic relationship. Now why does this apply to coral bleaching? Well what happens when a coral bleaches is that the coral actually loses the zooxanthellae that are inside of its tissues. Now because the zooxanthellae doesn't just give the coral its food, it also gives the coral its colour as well. When the coral loses its zooxanthellae, this actually turns the coral to turn white. Now this can be really bad for the coral because obviously it has just lost its main source of food. And if this coral bleaching continues, then it's actually going to cause the coral to probably die. Now, what causes coral bleaching? Coral bleaching is caused by stressful environmental conditions, such as changes in light, temperature, and nutrients. And the key reason that we're seeing a lot of coral bleaching at the moment is due to an increase in sea water temperature. But why has there been an increase in sea water temperature? Well, this is being increased because there are more greenhouse gases that are going into the atmosphere that are causing our planet to warm up. 
So these greenhouse gases are going into the atmosphere due to the burning of fossil fuels, such as oil, gas, and coal. So when you burn these, carbon dioxide and methane is put into the atmosphere, which causes the heat to be trapped around the planet, hence causing a greenhouse effect and the warming of our planet. Now, because oceans cover over 70% of our planet, they actually absorb around 95% of this excess heat and it is causing them to warm up. So actually the prevalence of coral bleaching is unfortunately increasing due to the increases in these gases in the atmosphere. And that's something we must all work together to try and avoid. Now that I've gone on to a little bit of background, what I'm going to do is I am going to demonstrate what happens when your paint has dried on whatever object you choose to paint it on. You can see that here are some ones that I made earlier. I've actually taken some coral skeletons from the beach and I have painted them with this paint mixture that I made earlier, and I just use a normal paintbrush that you should have access to in your classroom. So inside this bowl here, I just have normal cold water that I've just taken from the tap. And you can see that my corals are nice and bright and colorful. What we're gonna do now is we're actually going to mimic ocean warming and we're going to place them in this bowl here that has warm water inside of it. Now this water doesn't have to be boiling, it just has to be more than 88 Fahrenheit or 31 degrees centigrade. Now let's imagine the ocean has warmed and coral bleaching is going to occur. So I have placed my corals inside the warmer bowl you can see that the corals have turned white, which is showing that they have bleached. What we're going to do now is we're gonna think about what would happen if the environmental condition, so in this case, increased temperature, actually you know, went away and the waters became a little bit colder. If you take this out of the warm water and put it back inside of the cold water, you can see that the coral has regained its zooxanthellae, it has regained its food source and its color. So these corals have survived the coral bleaching event. However, if the corals are in the warm water for too long, then they are not going to be able to survive and unfortunately, they are going to die after they have been bleached. This is the end of the experiment. I hope you have fun doing this inside of your classrooms and your students enjoy it as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you soon.